Hi, future GISPs. I'm going to teach you everything that I learned to easily pass the GISP exam so that you don't have to spend years reading textbooks, getting degrees, paying for prep courses, and searching the internet for information like I did. In this video, I'm going to teach you everything I learned about graphic representation techniques and implications. Graphic representation techniques and implications is the first section under the Cartography and Visualization Knowledge category of the GISCI Geospatial Core Technical Exam list of knowledge categories. Let's get started with Section 301, Graphic Representation Techniques and Implications. Cartography. Cartography is the art and techniques of making maps. Informative cartography requires identification of the who, what, where, and how. Who is who the intended audience is. What is what information will be communicated. Where is where is the area of interest? And how is about the physical and resource limitations of the map? There are three ways to specify color. The three ways to specify color are red, green, and blue, or RGB, cyan, magenta, yellow, or CMYK, and Hue Saturation Value, or HSV. Specifying color with the red, green, blue, or RGB color methodology. Red, green, and blue is the additive color system. Zero of each color creates black, the max value of 255 of each color creates white. The combination of two primary colors creates a subtractive color. Red and blue combine to create magenta. Blue and green combine to create cyan. Green and red combine to create yellow. The additive system is how color is produced on computer screens. A variation of the red, green, blue system is the red, green, blue, and alpha system. With the red, green, blue, and alpha, or RGBA system, a fourth value is used that indicates transparency. In the RGBA methodology, A is for alpha. This value indicates transparency. Zero is fully transparent. 255, if using an 8-bit color, is fully opaque. Opaque. Opaque is a lack of transparency. 100% opaque is not transparent at all. 0% opaque is fully transparent or invisible. Specifying color with the cyan, magenta, yellow, or CMYK color system. The CMYK color system is the subtractive color system. The subtractive color system creates colors with the bases, cyan, magenta, yellow, and black. The last value, K, is for black. The absence of all bases is white light. Subtractive colors 
absorb parts of the light spectrum, leaving the rest of the spectrum behind. Mixing all subtractive colors creates black. The addition of black or K is necessary to create true black. Cyan absorbs red, reflecting green and blue. Magenta absorbs green, reflecting red and blue. Yellow absorbs blue, reflecting green and red. Cyan and magenta absorb red and green to leave blue. Cyan and yellow absorb red and blue, leaving green. Yellow and magenta absorb blue and green, leaving red. The subtractive color system is how color is printed on paper. The Hue Saturation Value, or HSV, color system. HSV is another additive color system. Hue is the additive color base determined by amounts of primary colors. Saturation is the intensity of color. Less intensity creates a lighter, whiter color. Value is the dimension of lightness or darkness. Lower value creates a darker color. Types of maps. There are many different types of maps. Let's take a look at some of the types of maps in common usage. A feature map. A feature map shows real-world features represented by cartographic objects. Feature maps are used for navigation and reference maps. Feature maps are also called reference maps. Thematic maps. A thematic map is a map of a particular subject matter or theme. A thematic map usually visualizes properties of geographic features that are not visible, such as temperature, language, or population. It's best to use an equal area projection for a thematic map. Equal area conic projections are used for the US, and equal area cylindrical projections are used for the world. Thematic map types include chloroplast, dasymmetric, isoplast, dot density, multivariate, proportional symbol, and graduated symbol maps. A chloropleth map. A chloropleth map is a thematic map that uses shading, colors, or patterns to show quantitative data about geographical areas. Each color or pattern represents a range of values. A daisy metric map. A daisy metric map is a type of chloropleth map. In a daisy metric map, ancillary information is used to model the internal distribution of a phenomenon. A daisy metric map is just a chloropleth map where the areas have been divided into more areas using another layer. Isorhythmic or isopleth maps. Isorhythmic or isopleth maps are maps where lines of equal value are drawn, called contour lines, or ranges of similar values are filled with similar colors or patterns. 
isorhythmic or isopleth maps represent a continuous surface. A dot density map. Dot density maps show the distribution of a quantitative phenomena where values and locations are known. Dots are placed where locations of variables are. A multivariate display. A multivariate display has more than two sets of data on a single map. A proportional symbol map. On a proportional symbol map, the size of the symbol corresponds to the magnitude of the mapped feature. A graduated symbol map. On a graduated symbol map, the size of a symbol represents a range of values. A color ramp. A color ramp is a thematic set of colors used to represent variation, order, sequential values, or different categories on a map. Color ramps are usually divergent or sequential. A divergent color ramp. A divergent color ramp shows when values are above or below a central value. For example, elevation above or below sea level. A sequential color ramp. A sequential color ramp uses a sequence of colors to indicate which values are smaller or larger than others. A cardimetric map. A cardimetric map is a map that accurately represents the relative position of objects and may be used as a source of data. USGS topographic maps are well-known cardimetric maps. Web mapping. Web mapping uses the internet to generate and distribute spatial data and maps. Web mapping usually provides a service where users can choose what is shown on a map. In my opinion, this section significantly overlaps section 302 map design principles, and essential map elements. See section 302 for more about map design. Now you know everything that I learned about graphic representation techniques and implications to easily pass the GISP exam. Don't forget to thumbs up and subscribe to my channel so that I can keep helping people pass the GISP exam and achieve the rewarding careers in GIS that they deserve. You can also find everything I learned to pass the GISP exam in my book, The Ultimate GISP Exam Study Guide, available on Amazon. My study guide is an easily understandable, comprehensive, graphical, all-in-one resource for passing the exam. You can find the link to my study guide in the description below. Thanks for joining me and congratulations in advance on passing the GISP exam.